Today's lesson is on applying coordinate geometry. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can use variables to name the coordinates of a figure. This allows us to show that relationships are true for a general situation. Remember when we learned about the mid-segment of a triangle? Here are three possible ways to place a triangle and its mid-segment on a coordinate plane. Figure 1 does not have very good placement because it does not use either of the axes, so it requires more variables. Figure 2 has very good placement because it uses the axis. It puts segment PR along the x-axis. It also puts point P on the origin. So the coordinates for point M are A over 2, B over 2, and for point N, A plus C over 2, B over 2. Figure 3 also has good placement because it uses the x-axis as well, and it puts point Q on the y-axis. So the ordered pair for point M is negative AB, and for point N it is CB. When placing a figure in a coordinate plane, it is usually helpful to place at least one side on an axis or to center it at the origin. For the coordinates, try to anticipate what you will need to do in the problem, then multiply the coordinates by the appropriate number to make your work easier. In example A, we will name coordinates. What are the coordinates of the vertices of each figure? Explain. In part A, quadrilateral SQRE is a square where the length of segment SQ equals 2A. Now, we know that because it's a square, all the sides are going to be congruent. So each side will also be 2A units long. The second part tells us that the axes bisect each side. So think about this. We know that bisect means to create two congruent parts. So where the x-axis intersects side SE and side QR, each portion above and below will be half of 2A, or A units long. Since these segments are A units long, so is this segment. So we are A units away in a positive direction from 0 on the x-axis. Going in the opposite direction, we are also A units away from 0 on the x-axis, but in a negative direction. So this way is negative A. From the origin going up the y-axis, again we are A units above so it is A in a positive direction for the y-axis, but 0 along the x. So this point would be 0A, and going down would be a negative direction, so we would be negative A units away on the y-axis. So this point would be 0, negative A. Since we are looking for the ordered pairs for each vertex, so we want the ordered pairs of points S, Q, R, and E, we know that to get to point Q here, we need to go A units along the X and A units along the Y for the ordered pair AA. For the ordered pair for point R, we need to go A units along the X and negative A along the Y, so point R's ordered pair would be A, negative A. For point E, we will go negative A units along the S, X axis and then negative A down on the Y. So E's ordered pairs would be negative A, negative A. And finally, for point S, we will go negative A along the X and positive A along the Y for negative A, A. Part B says that polygon TRI is an isosceles triangle where the length of segment TI is 2A. It also says that the y-axis is the median. Remember, the median starts at a vertex and bisects the opposite side. That means that segment TO is congruent to segment IO. So if all of segment TI is 2A, then segment TO is 1A and segment IO is also 1A. Since we move along the positive direction to point I, this will be A. And for the negative direction, we will have negative A for our x coordinate for point T. Since we do not move along the y-axis at all to get to point I or point T, our y-coordinate will be 0 for each ordered pair. For point R, since we do not know the height of our triangle, we're going to use another variable, B, 
for the length from point zero or the distance from point zero to point R along the Y axis. So our Y coordinate will be B, but since we don't move left or right along the X axis, our X coordinate will be zero. So point R will be ordered pair zero B. Pause the video and do you try number one. What are the coordinates of the vertices of each figure? For part A, Polygon RECT is a rectangle with height A and length 2B. The Y axis bisects segment EC and segment RT. Since segment RT is placed on the X axis and our height is A units long, we know that the distance up the Y axis is going to be A. Since the length of our rectangle is 2B and the y-axis bisects segment EC and segment RT, we know that we will have B units to the right and B units to the left on both of these. So on our X, we will be to B here and negative B here. So the ordered pair for point R will be negative B, zero. For point E, it will be negative B, A. For point C, it will be positive B, A, and for point T, it will be B, zero. In part B, polygon KITE is a kite where the length of segment IE is 2A, the length of segment KO is B, and the length of segment OT is C. If the length of segment IE is 2A, and the x-axis bisects that segment, we know we go a units up and a units down. So this will be a on the y-axis, and this will be negative a on the y-axis. If the length of segment ko is b units, we will go negative b to get to k from 0. And since the length of segment ot is c, we will go to c on the x-axis to get to point t. Now let's use our points on the number line on each X and Y axis to write our ordered pairs. So for point K, we are at negative B, zero. For point I, we are at zero A. For point T, we are at C, zero. And for point E, we are at zero, negative A. In example two, we will use variable coordinates. The diagram shows a general parallelogram with a vertex at the origin and one side along the x-axis. What are the coordinates of point D, the point of intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram ABCO, and how do you know? Since the diagonals of all parallelograms bisect each other, point D is on the midpoint of this diagonal it is also on the midpoint of this diagonal. So it is up to us to decide which ordered pairs we want to use. Let's start with the midpoint formula. And let's use segment CA. So we'll use 2B as X1 and 2A as X2. And we'll use 2C as Y1 and 0 as Y2. Now let's just simplify we can see that this 2 can be divided into this 2B and this 2A, leaving us with B plus A as our X coordinate. Then looking at our Y coordinate, we can take 2C and divide it by 2 to get C, and 0 divided by 2 to get 0. Since C plus 0 is C, our Y coordinate is C. So the ordered pair for point D is B plus A, C. Now explain why the X coordinate of point B is 2A plus 2B. The X coordinate of point C is 2B, which makes this point on my number line 2B. In my parallelogram, this distance would be the same as this distance since our opposite sides are congruent. So this is 2B more then 2A to get out to this point B. Pause the video and do you try number two. We can use coordinate geometry and algebra to prove theorems in geometry. This kind of proof is called a coordinate proof. 
Sometimes it is easier to show that a theorem is true by using a coordinate proof rather than a standard deductive proof. It is useful to write a plan for a coordinate proof. Let me show you how. In example three, we will plan a coordinate proof of the trapezoid mid-segment theorem.